All right, perfect. It's 601, so let's get started. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Ishan. Uh, I work for Shrijan. And today I'm going to talk, be talking about uh, can Drupal be the decoupled CMS that marketers love, also love, right? So uh, I'll talk a little bit about why uh, I picked up marketers today for this session. But uh, before we get into that, let's talk about decoupled CMS, right? Let's do a quick uh, recap about decoupled CMS and this. Uh, so this is a very uh, high level view, a very broad classification, but I think for uh, today's presentation, uh, this is sufficient, uh, right? So yes, there could be multiple different layers when it comes to decoupling Drupal, there are different approaches, but at a very high level, if you have to make a distinction, uh, on the right, we have the traditional approach where uh, Drupal is responsible for both the front end and the back end. So uh, your front end rendering of the website or your web application on a web browser, uh, you would be using Drupal's uh, Twig templating engine to render those pages, right? So Drupal is responsible for both the back end and the front end. Uh, on the decouple side of things, uh, what you see on the left, you have the you have some flexibility, right? So you're using Drupal for storing content, managing content, and then you're exposing it in the form of APIs. And uh, in most cases, you'll see a modern JavaScript framework such as Angular, React, or Vue uh, being used for the front end. And then, of course, the content uh, can be distributed, and these applications are not necessarily just a uh, web application. They could be uh, native mobile apps, smart smartwatch uh, apps, and, and so on. So that's the distinction, uh, the two approaches. And we'll be talking about uh, the decoupled approach today and uh, how we can. Uh, work with Drupal. Uh, of course, you know, uh, you might have seen uh, in all of these conferences over the past two, three years, there's a lot of uh, discussion around decoupled reason, uh, CMS, and there's a good reason for that. You can see uh, a Google Trend report here, like uh, about three years ago, late 2017, you can see there's been a constant spike and an upward spiral for a uh, headless content management system in, in terms of uh, Google search trends. And Drupal has kept pace with it, uh, to be fair. Uh, you, this, you can see there are a few screenshots here on the right is actually from Drupal.org. That's the official Drupal 8 documentation uh, when Drupal 8 was launched. Uh, these are the features that were listed and you can see API first, easily decoupled being mentioned over there. Mm, towards the back, you can see a couple of screenshots from Dries's uh, blog post. So he has been writing regular blog posts. I think he comes out with this post every year where he talks about uh, how you can decouple with Drupal. And there are different approaches, uh, such as progressive decoupling, completely decoupling. So there's a spectrum of different approaches from uh, completely uh, coupled to completely decoupled. So there are different approaches. So he talks about that. And then on the bottom left is the screenshot from uh, DrupalCon this year, where he again uh, talked about his vision for Drupal 10. And one of the initiatives he mentioned was to become the best decoupled CMS out there. So the, the Drupal community has been keeping up with uh, the rise of decoupled CMS. Uh, but can Drupal be the decoupled CMS that marketers love, right? And uh, why am I talking about marketers today? Because uh, we're seeing that there is a, a sort of a division in the CMS world. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have the marketing teams. And you know, marketing team is a narrow term. You can think of uh, any non-developer CMS user here, to be honest. Uh, it could be publishers if you're talking about an a media or a news website, uh, it could be editors. So anybody who manages content and uses the CMS, uh, you can broadly classify as non-developers. Uh, they 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 want features such as the drag and drop page builder, or uh, they want the ability to preview content which is unpublished. They may have uh, moderation workflows that they want to uh, retain, and they do a lot more than just adding content, right? They also have responsibilities where, uh, with respect to SEO analytics and things like that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have front-end developers who have a preference for using modern JavaScript uh, frameworks, especially people who are not familiar with Drupal. So they don't want to learn PHP or Twig just to work with Drupal. They want the flexibility to work with uh, some of these others uh, JavaScript uh, front-end frameworks. And at the uh, core of this division, I, I feel is the uh, this perspective, right? This point of view. So. There is a point of view uh, with a lot of new age, uh, pure headless CMSs out there, which are emerging uh, in the market. Uh, 
they view content in a very very narrow perspective they think of it just as data so there's a lot of talk about structured data how you can how these uh, pure headless cmss are able to support structured data which is something drupal has been doing for years as well uh, but if you look at the left hand side i think that's where drupal uh, plays a big role right so these non developer roles that i'm talking about the marketing teams they are not just adding data to the cms right there are a lot of other things that they are responsible for as well uh, so they may be responsible for creating a landing page they have the need to change the layouts uh, there are compliance whether it's uh, editorial workflows whether it's uh, related to analytics seo so there's a ton of different things that uh, people do on a cms than just adding content Here's an example of that. So uh, I really look up to McKenzie.com for the design. I really like that website. So I picked a few examples from McKenzie.com. Uh, you can see this is a hero banner, right? Uh, and you can already see uh, three different variations here. There is uh, on the top left, the, uh, the text copies on the top right. Uh, on the left, uh, on the bottom of the screen, you can see the copies on the left. Uh, in the middle, you see the screenshot where the copy is on the left, but the text color is black, right? So you can see, depending on where the focus area is of the uh, hero background image, uh, they're moving the text around. And this is text, by the way, so that's very important, right? So we know from an SEO perspective, uh, having somebody to do this in Photoshop is not ideal because then your text and the subheadline that you see uh, is not part of the HTML, right? And it cannot be indexed by search engine. So as a good practice, you you say this should be text, but then you cannot uh, go to a developer every time you want uh, these kind of changes, right? Because uh, just looking at McKenzie.com, they have uh, over 50 such pages and they may uh, want to create new pages like these uh, on the go as well. So they cannot have developers do this all the time. So this is a very uh, small example, but there are many more things like this that the marketing teams need to do on a day-to-day -day basis when uh, using a CMS. So basically, we're talking about trade-offs here, right? Uh, Dries mentioned about this trade-offs between the developer experience and the non-developer experience. So uh, which direction will Drupal choose? Where should Drupal go? Uh, Dries has made it clear that uh, when he gave the keynote this year, he said he wants Drupal 10 to be able to do both of them, right? Uh, not having to do those these trade-offs. And that's exactly what we'll talk about today. Uh, we certainly don't want to go in this direction so this is a quote taken from uh, preston so's series of blog posts i've uh, put in a link to uh, this series towards the end of the presentation this is really useful uh, he talks about these different realities between um, the front-end developer world which where all the talk is around uh, you know graphql uh, react gatsby static site generator so there's a lot of uh, excitement and talk about these things but then what happens to the marketing team needs. So he, he talks about you know the front-end developer world where some of these uh, non-negotiable features, right, like previewing content or layout management are just going away. So we don't want to, in my opinion, we don't want to go in, into this direction with Drupal and make it a pure headless CMS. So that's where uh, what we we'll talk about today uh, as part of a demo uh, is a Drupal distribution called Easy Content. And it is trying to address uh, this gap uh, and trying to bridge the gap between all these non-developer roles and the developer roles. And we'll take a quick look at how that happens. So as part of the demo, I'll cover some of these features that I'm showing you here. So uh, you can decouple Drupal. Uh, and I'm talking about completely decoupled. We're not talking about progressive decoupling or any other such way. We're talking about pure decoupled headless implementation of Drupal. You can do that. And you can have your front end on uh, a Next.js or a Gatsby or Angular, but you can still retain these features. So you can still use the layout builder to create landing pages. You can preview unpublished content. Uh, when it comes to SEO and things like accessibility, so you can retain your control over meta tags, path alias, schema.org. And then you can also have the configuration, the example that I gave with the McKenzie.com hero, you can have things like that, uh, moving images or moving the text left and right. You can do all of that in a completely decoupled setup. So let's get into the demo and let's see how we can do this. Uh, let me just pull up a new browser window. I'm going to minimize this. 
All right, so here is my uh, demo site. I will log into the back end here. Okay, so this is a demo Drupal 8 site set up using the easy content distribution that I mentioned. And I'll log into the back end and we'll start creating some content. Uh, so I'll keep it quick. Let's uh, look at, let's straight away jump into the layout builder. So here is a scenario where uh, you may want to create a landing page or you may want to manipulate an existing landing page. It could be your home page, it could be your section page, anything like that. So uh, I have a basic content type here called landing page. I just need to put in some title. I think that's all I need to do and let me publish it. And I'll straight away get a blank page. Uh, we don't have any pre-built layouts here. So I'm getting a blank page and I, I want to start from scratch. I want to use the layout builder to start populating this page with some components. And let me just remove this. Okay, uh, as I do this, uh, what you notice here on the demo site is that uh, I have this demo site hooked up with a bunch of decoupled applications. Uh, you know, we have a, a Gatsby application, we have an Angular application, and we have a React application, which is built using Next.js. So I've just created a blank page, but before I start working on this page, let me show you that as I did this, a blank page has also been created on these different applications. So I'm uh, pulling up a couple of them. So I've, I've pulled up a React Next.js application. You can see uh, I'm on a completely decoupled. This is a Next.js application on a different URL. Um, and it, it has just received this uh, blank page as well. And it has picked up the URL from the Drupal backend. And similarly, uh, I have my Gatsby Cloud website. This is actually a live preview. So I'll, I'll use this for the demo because it refreshes as I make changes uh, to my Drupal uh, so I have these two different decoupled applications and I have a page created there as well uh, from Drupal. So let me actually go back to my layout builder and try to make these side by side so that we can see how the live preview works. Okay. All right, I have my Drupal content type here uh, where I will be using the layout builder to add three components. So I have a section already which is full width. I will put in a hero block here. So you can see I have a variety of components available here. I will use the hero component. Let me quickly put in some information here. I am trying to create a page by a hero similar to what I saw, I showed in the mckenzie.com example so that you can relate to it. So let me put in some link text. You can just point to any dummy page. And of course I need to put in a hero media image here. So. All right, so the next two components I'll pick will be very quick. Uh, this is the only one that I needed to have some configuration. So I have added a hero proc. And let me, those of you who are not familiar with the layout builder, it, it also lets you allow, uh, lets you create dynamic section, right? So we had a full width column, but I can also add like a two, two column layout. So now my uh, next section gets divided into two different blocks. And on the left hand side, let me pull in uh, a Google map, right? Okay, I'll put in a map block. So let's just say next Drupal con at New York. I'll give in some address to pick up and we'll add just one more component which is a social media, so I'll pull in a tweet. So this is something that, you know, day-to-day -day marketing teams do, right? They do utilize such components on their uh, CMSs 
uh, they may have to create these pages very quickly if they have to roll out a campaign. So I will go and save this. And it does take a few seconds to uh, deploy the changes on Gatsby. This is, end of the day, this is creating a static page, right? So Gatsby is a static site generator. Uh, it will create the HTML and serve it, serve it via CDN. Uh, here you go, right? So you can see I have a Gatsby page here and uh, it just got the hero banner. So I was able to dynamically create a page from scratch, add a full column, add two columns, and place three different components here, right? And uh, same thing would have happened here on my Next.js application. So if I refresh my Next.js application, uh, so you can see we have the flexibility of using different technologies, right? This is server-side rendering, this is Next.js, uh, this is Gatsby. Uh, both of them are working with Drupal's Layout Builder. I can, so it's not just about placing components, moving them around, you can drag and drop, of course, you can change. So let's let's uh, do that quickly, uh, just to show that it works. I say, I don't want these in a different section. I want everything to be in a one column layout, so we can do that. Let me pull the hero media at the top. All right, and then let's also, just to go back to the example of uh, mckenzie.com that I gave earlier, I can, for example, change the color of my overlay. I can make the text position center. I'll hit update. And I've made a bunch of changes on this page now. And that should refresh in a few seconds on my Gatsby Live preview site as well. So there you go, right? So you can see I was able to change the banner uh, color. I was able to make the text center aligned. Uh, and then I have my components in a single column now. So that's you know an integration that Easy Content lets you do. Uh, it's allowing you to use the layout builder with uh, such decoupled frameworks, including static site generators such as Gatsby. Uh, and then these components can be very powerful, right? So as you know, with Drupal, you have the flexibility. So we have components here, which actually can be tied back with view. So you can also, it's not just about adding content to these components you have components such as these, which can, for example, I can say, uh, bring me all articles that are tagged with a particular taxonomy term, right? So you have the flexibility, you can keep on adding more components to your component library and give the uh, CMS users this flexibility. So we've talked about the layout builder, uh, which is an important part, uh, but you know, uh, there are other kinds of content, the most important being structured content, such as say, uh, you may have uh, something like an article, right? Uh, where you use your traditional node edit form. So let me give an example of that as well and show you how that works. So here I have an article content type uh, where you can see I have my uh, different metadata fields such as title, subhead, uh, some reference field for author, we have a teaser, and we have a bunch of components here uh, similar to the landing page, but these are in the form of paragraphs, right? Uh, but you can see there's a whole variety, you can add more uh, you can see there are a bunch available out of the box, but all of these work with decoupled interfaces as well. So what I'll do is I'll open the preview for this page as well to show some other aspects of uh, decoupling that I spoke, spoke about earlier, right? So let's do a bunch of things on the article content type as well. So let me pull this here as well. That's easier. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this sample article. So we have a bunch of components already pre populated. So this is my article showing up on Gatsby. Uh, I have text, I have images, a pull quote, I have an embed code here. There are, there's a photo gallery. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at this photo gallery because I'm going to do some changes here to just to show again the power and the flexibility that CMS users can get even with decoupled implementation. So you can see this photo gallery right now is coming in the form of a carousal. So I'll do a bunch of things here to show how the article content type is also integrated. So one, I will uh, drag and drop and pull the gallery to the top. Let's change the order of the components. Uh, what I will also do is I will also change the uh, view mode, right? So you can you can have different displays of your components, right? Of or or your entire content as well. So 
right now the gallery displays as a carousel but i want to show it in a different way this is a standard gallery that we're calling which is in the form of a pop up so i've made a couple of changes i moved the gallery component to the top of the article as well as change the view mode and this should refresh in a few seconds as well and there you go so my gallery is at the top uh okay sorry let me there's an issue with the gatsby preview for that view mode but let's pick up a next year's application this one should work there you go so you can see on my next year's application the photo gallery has gone to the top and it's opening up in a pop up window right so again you know things that your cms users might be used to working with drupal for years or you know with with new functionality such as the layout builder and and these kind of features we are retaining all of these with completely decoupled applications as well so we we talked about content a bit uh, what you can do with the content you, how you can use the layout builder but there are a bunch of other things as well you know which may seem small but are very important from an editorial workflow point of view um uh, and i'll i'll highlight that next so for example i'll create a new article from scratch now just to show a couple of features that also get missed out when you go completely decoupled so demo article and publish so the most common one uh, is actually something like ability to preview unpublished content right having how do you do that when you are completely decoupled because your decoupled front ends have no idea about your user roles if the content uh, if you logged into the cms uh, there's no connection right so that's why you tend to lose that ability but here what i'll show is i am i'm doing a bunch of things i'm going to save this as a draft so it will be unpublished i'll also demo a couple of other things so i, I spoke about you know seo and things like that so uh some advanced users may want to control these things right they have the ability to do that in drupal so i can for example change my i'm just going to say demo summary here i'm just going to override my meta tag for a description let me pick something like schema.org right which is a initiative backed by google and other companies to uh, add schema to structured content throughout the web right this is really important and drupal has a module for it Uh, but again we want to make sure it works with decoupled so i'm just going to change the schema.org type to say tech art article so i have this control over my metadata right uh, i can schedule content uh, that works with decoupled uh, let me also change the url so instead of going with the alias that generated automatically let's just say uh, custom url 123 right i'm overriding the url over here and I'm, so i have the content which is unpublished i have overridden the url i have overridden a couple of meta tag information i'm going to save and edit this okay sorry okay so we have a draft article and if everything has gone correctly if i go to my let's pick up the next year's application and let's also see if the react preview works let's like okay okay so few things uh what we did just to recap so you can see the url i had overridden the url i have got that here so i have custom url 123 instead of any uh programmatic rule or automatically generating alias i was able to manually override the url um let's take a look at the page source as well because i want to show the metadata that was updated so we had updated a couple of things we had updated the description tag if i correctly remember it was demo summary yeah so you can see i have demo summary in my uh description meta tag i have schema.org right so we had changed the type of the schema i'm sorry if it's too small but i'm just going to highlight or you can see it has changed to tech article right so again you know things advanced functionality which 
people may want to control through the CMS, they can do that. And of course, the biggest part uh, and the most important piece is the previewing of unpublished, right? So we have a we have done this in a way that uh, you can see there's a hash key attached to this URL, which is like a password, uh, which is unique to every node, and it gets uh, refreshed after every few seconds. And the only way to get this hash key is if you click the preview uh, button from the Drupal backend, right? So if you're logged into Drupal, if you have the right role, if you have the right permissions, uh, when you have when you're going through your moderation dashboard, you will be able to preview unpublished content on your decouple applications uh, with this hash key. Of course, any other visitor who might get this URL from somewhere will not be able to, unless they have the hash key, they will get a 403 access denied. So you're able to retain your workflow in this manner. So, so there are a bunch of these things that uh, you can do to retain these features. I think uh, that probably is the end of the demo. I, I, I can come back to the demo if there's anything else uh, that comes up or if you want to talk about. So I'll just quickly switch over to my slides uh, and then we can jump over to the questions. So with, you know, what we saw just now with the demo, at least, you know, you saw that uh, we were able to retain all of this. Uh, we saw different JavaScript frameworks that were working, and we were able to show uh, all of these features working uh, from the Drupal backend. So this, you know, it is uh, we feel that definitely a happy compromise, and all of this is possible because of Drupal's op open architecture, right? So you have uh, whether it's schema.org, whether it's scheduling, you have a uh, fifteen thousand plus modules available, right? So uh, some of these functionality, a lot of these new age CMSs, you know, you you don't have them, right? Uh, because Drupal has been around for so long, uh, there's so much editorial workflow capabilities that are already available in the ecosystem. So uh, we feel that bringing those, leveraging those, uh, along with decoupled front end is, is a great compromise and makes uh, both sides happy. And as I mentioned, uh, you can do all of this too. So you can, I'll, I'll put in these links on the chat window as well, uh, but you can uh, take a look at easy content distribution. Uh, there is a sub module called easy content API. Uh, if you're focused more on the decoupling implementation, such as the one I was showing today, you can uh, look more closely at the uh, easy content API project. And that, you know, there are a bunch of modules that are part of these distributions like access unpublished, uh, which if you're not looking for everything, but you're looking for just that functionality of previewing unpublished content, you can check this out. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, going completely decoupled, if that's not your you know thing, if you think that's not the uh, right approach for your project, you can also consider progressive decoupling, which is a very different approach from the approach that uh, I have taken here or the one that I've shown here, but definitely something to check out. Uh, and that's something that's part of uh, Dries's blog as well. Uh, apart from this, a couple of things I would recommend reading. Uh, one is the whole series of uh, blog posts by Preston. Uh, I'll put this in the chat window as well, but it, there's a whole series of blog posts he's talked about where we he talks about this grand compromise that is needed. So that's exactly what I spoke about today. Uh, this is how we envision Drupal can provide this uh, grand compromise. So do check that out. And with that, uh, that's about it. Uh, let me quickly check if we're a bit early, but you know we can have some time for questions. But if you, even after this chat today, if you want to connect, uh, you know we can. I am available on Twitter and LinkedIn. We can connect, and please, I, I'll be happy to learn more about your experiences with decoupling. Uh, whether you've run into these situations between marketing teams and developers, and you know would love to discuss ideas around how you approach those situations. And of course, if you have any questions on easy content, if you like to get a demo, uh, we can set that up as well and we can uh, deep dive into that as well. So uh, would love to connect with different people. And let me see if it's better to maybe, I, I don't want to show the infinite tunnel, so not sure how to avoid this, but hope this is not too inconvenient. I'm just looking at the questions and uh, taking a look at the questions. So please feel free to add more questions here. So, uh, Benji, your first question is, does the distribution include the front-end components? That's a great question. Uh, it, it, so it's not on Drupal, uh, so, but it, it is open source. So we are trying to make all of that open source as well. So we have, so if you go to the uh, sub-project here, Easy Content API, 
uh, right now we have the next year's speech is it is completely open source so it's available uh, but it's available on github right because it's not the drupal so yes you can you download the drupal piece from drupal.org and then you have uh, your next year starter kit here so you can set up the the same demo that i showed today uh, you can set up the exact demo uh, with the drupal backend and this uh, demo site that i showed today you can do this on your own uh, using this uh, github uh, project so everything is there uh, in case you're running into anything, please feel free to reach out. Our team would love to collaborate with you. And we will be releasing, uh, so we release the starter kit for next year. We will be releasing starter kits for Gatsby and uh, Angular soon as well. So that was the first question. Um, second one was, how do you render the layout builder configuration? Uh, that's a great question. So we include all of that information. So we've extended, I think that answers uh, Carlos's question as well. So we are using JSON API, uh, Drupal JSON API, but we've extended that API to include additional information. Um, how you handle the layout information is uh, slightly up to you. The approach we've taken is uh, in, in the case of Gatsby, uh, you know, uh, we do all of this in GraphQL. Uh, but in the case of uh, this Nexus application, I, I will bring up an architecture diagram and, uh, you know, it's not, yeah, I, it, it looks a bit complicated here, but it's not really, but we do have, so what essentially you would need is you would need some sort of middleware to do all of this. And again, this middleware, all of this information is part of the GitHub starter kit that I mentioned. So you can, uh, it will have installation instructions for all of this Node.js server as well. But we are using the middleware to sort of take in that layout information and transform it in a way uh, that these front end applications can uh, understand, as well as we do that. In, uh, that's where we cache this as well, right? Because changing the layout does not happen very frequently, right? And, and we don't want to hit Drupal to get the layout information for a page, right? We want this to be purely decoupled and we want to retain the performance. And of course, Gatsby is a static site generator, so it will generate the HTML. So we, we're doing uh, all of this in, in the middleware in, in Node.js. But we do, yes, we've extended the JSON API to send this additional information about uh, the layout builder. Uh, Chris asked, if you can do all of this completely decoupled, is there still argument for progressive decoupling? Um, I mean, there is. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't discount any approach. I'm, I, I'm sure there are, uh, but in, in our experience, uh, this whole project started because we were running into issues with progressive decoupling, right? Specifically, uh, whatever you do, there is still, you have, you need to have that magic sauce and it's not, it's not solving the problem of a front end developer, not having to do anything with Drupal, right? You still have to understand Twig as well, even with, with uh, progressive decoupling. So, uh, that's why I, I would say progressive decoupling use case, in my opinion, would still be there if you're already familiar with Drupal. Right, if you're comfortable with the Drupal front end, and if you're looking to maybe a, on a couple of pages or for some critical functionality, you want to embed a React application or something like that on your page, you can definitely still go with progressive decoupling. But I think from a uh, from an outsider, somebody who who's not familiar with Drupal front end, uh, it's probably better to go completely decouple uh, rather than trying uh, progressive decoupling. Uh, next question is: You said Angular eight would work uh yes angular 8 would work react view just uh, all, all of these work will work eric uh the idea here is that you have the complete flexibility of course uh there is some work that you need to do and that's why uh as part of easy content we are providing the starter kits for next js angular and gatsby uh we don't have a starter kit for Vue.js, uh, but but yes you can definitely attempt that on uh, very similar lines to uh, these other frameworks but the uh, what the easy content api module uh, does is that it's going to provide the uh, additional information regarding the layouts uh link to the starter kit sure uh, the link is right here uh, let me post a bunch of these links on the chat window so this is the the first one is the uh, project, the distribution, uh, there is a sub module which is more focused towards the uh, decoupling aspect. And from here, you will get the link to the uh, next year starter kit. Uh, 
and then of course there is uh, we have a contact form here as well i mean you can reach out to the developers directly on drupal.org or you can reach out uh, on this page as well uh, plus if you want to see these demos again or you want to just uh, pass these demo links around there are smaller versions of these demos as well on this uh, youtube playlist so these are specific for different functionalities such as the layout builder previewing uh, so these are very quick uh, two minute sessions if you want to uh, watch them after this or you want to share it around uh, feel free to do that uh, we still have uh, about nine minutes left so i'm here for the rest nine minutes uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to discuss anything uh, would love to do that i think i have the ability to also pass on the controls if anybody wants to share something or talk i, I guess we can do that as well but Happy to stick around to talk more about this. Has anybody has anybody run into these situations? Like, are are you also seeing uh, these kind of like? Are you seeing this disconnect or like this division between? these different fractions such as you know front end developers and and cms users would love to know more about that as well and see if others are also seeing this but that's something that we are definitely seeing a lot uh, i'm seeing that a lot and you know in my company at region as well we're seeing that a lot so would love to know if others are also running into this situation Great, Eric. Yep, absolutely. And, and what you know, at least I've seen is that it also sometimes some of these small things like you know, uh, ability to preview and publish content, all of these become uh, real after after going after implementing, right? So we've seen a lot of projects where. Uh, Initially, the thought was to go decoupled, and after everything going live, you know, then realizing that you know, uh, and people take some of these features for granted, right? And it's not their fault as well, right? If you've been using a CMS like Drupal or WordPress for a decade now, you 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 know some of these things just work, and suddenly realizing that oh, you don't get this feature, or I mean, everything can be built, yes, right? But having to say oh, you need scheduling, yes, we can do, right? We'll have to implement something for scheduling, or we'll have to implement something to get you. Uh, a url redirect right i mean uh, that's a very uh, that that's something that happened in a couple of projects right where thing like adding a redirect for uh, a page is, is a functionality again that drupal provides right either there are modules that let that let editors uh, create a redirect for a page for a url but does that work seamlessly well with your completely decoupled site it 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 does not right you have to do something to make it work Absolutely, Eric. That's completely true. Uh, I hope everybody can see the screen, but Eric just mentioned that uh, the unfortunate thing about decoupled is that people still think they can plug in uh, some Drupal module and it will continue to work, which is not the case. Uh, that's absolutely true. I think that's an expectation that should be set. Uh, you know, everybody should be aware of this, that if you're expecting everything to work, just make sure, you know, it may, may not work, right? In most cases, you will have to do something to make it work. So uh, that's definitely something that uh, we should be aware of before uh, getting into these projects. I'll just stop sharing so that we're not seeing all these infinite screens. But uh, please, please feel free to add more questions. Uh, so Julian asked, is there sufficient value uh, 
that Drupal provides to be a good choice for headless despite the confusion. Uh, there's definitely a lot of value, uh, Julian. I think it, it goes back to uh, my initial point around Drupal lets you do a lot more than just managing content. So yes, there are use cases where you're looking at a pure headless CMS uh, to add structured content and distribute content. But there are many other situations where you need to do a lot more. Uh, you may want to integrate with other uh, backend systems in an enterprise, right? And, and Drupal is really great at integration, right? It's completely open. You can integrate with your, uh, you know, your single sign-on at the back end, or it may be a translation service, or so it, it provides you all of these flexibilities, right? Uh, which you can retain. So there's definitely a lot of value in considering Drupal as a, a headless solution. And, and in fact, we feel Drupal has a lot of advantages over some of the other pure headless CMSs because of its uh, developer ecosystem, because of the modules that are already available, uh, you're able to get a lot more functionality out there. So if it's a front-end uh, Drupal module, but don't modules. Uh, Chris, no, actually, no, your uh, permissions will work. Like if, yes, for the editors, the permissions will work. Uh, workflow, yes, but but to the extent like uh, previewing unpublished content. So if, if part of your workflow is, uh, and I, I mean, in most workflows, that is the case, right? You would have stages where your content is not published, right? If it's unpublished, then, uh, no, there's no straightforward way to preview that content, right? You, you, there are many different approaches to do that. Some people uh, create a preview in Drupal itself, even though the application is front end, so they will duplicate the front end and create, uh, uh, just for the preview functionality, they would have a preview within Drupal, which is not ideal because then you're uh, not truly testing the, uh, the content as it will be shown, right? Uh, there can always be differences between your, say, uh, JavaScript front end and the Drupal front end. So that's not an ideal solution. Uh, people have tried doing the progressive decoupling just for the preview. That's also not ideal. So there are definitely, you can make all of this work, but the point is that you have to do something to make it work. It, it's not that seamless and it doesn't work out of the box. So you have to do a lot of these things. Uh, so our attempt with this distribution is to get all of this working from day one and uh, saving you this time, right? Uh, great, I think we're about one minute left uh, for this session. So please, if there's any last minute questions, please uh, go ahead. Uh, otherwise we can definitely, you know, you can reach out to me uh, from the Srijan page or on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, would love to connect with everybody and uh, talk more about this. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Carlos, for coming in. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, have a great rest of the bad camp.